Oh Lord, I really hope that everybody that watches this at least has an inclination of what Sailor Moon is or you can walk away from this very confused. Very confused. Sailor Moon has a huge following of fans, collectors, and cosplayers, but where did this anime that we love 30 years later come from? To commemorate the 30th anniversary of the Sailor Moon anime, which first aired in Japan on March 7, 1992, today I'm going to be sharing some of my favorite snippets of where Sailor Moon came from and the history of the anime. Now, I don't want this video to go on too long, so I won't be covering the live action series, the musicals, or the the manga in deep detail. But if you enjoy this type of video essay, or you want to see more Sailor Moon content, be sure to subscribe to my channel. In 1975, the meta series Super Sentai aired in Japan and continued through the decades. This was a live action show about a group of superheroes, usually men, who teamed up together to fight monsters. The show was geared towards a young male audience. In North America, this series was eventually adapted into Mighty Morphin Power Rangers in the 1990s. Enter Naoko Takeuchi, who we all know as the award-winning author of Sailor Moon, but there is so much backstory of where Sailor Moon began, much of which starts with Naoko, who was born and raised in Japan to Kenji and Ikuko Takeuchi, who also had her younger brother Shingo. Do you recognize those names? Even though Takeuchi graduated college with a chemistry degree and she was a licensed pharmacist, she had a love of manga during her school years and she joined her school's astronomy and manga clubs. She also worked as a miko at a shrine near her university. Takeuchi started getting her manga work published right out of school at 19 years old with some early pieces before eventually submitting Sailor Moon to Kodansha's Nakiyoshi and having Toei turn it into an anime. In both an interview on the first season Sailor Moon anime Laserdisc, as well as a Sentai series 20th anniversary Toei video, which you can still watch on YouTube, we learned that the creator of Sailor Moon, Naoko Takeuchi, was at least partially inspired by these types of live action shows, but she wanted to make something for girls, which ended up being the five girls that we know and love as the fighting warriors. The story of Sailor Moon did not start with the first publication of the manga, which was published in the Nakayoshi D. December 1991 volume, but it actually started with Code Moi Sailor V, which is the prequel to Sailor Moon and was published about six months prior. Sailor V is an idol of the character Usagi Skino, who we all know and love as Sailor Moon, the video game and food loving 14 year old girl. I definitely relate to that. Sailor V featured Minako Aino, a school girl very much like Usagi Skino, who is discovered by a talking cat named Artemis, who teams up with her to fight evil. Even though Sailor V was published before Sailor Moon, Sailor V was coming out alongside Sailor Moon in manga format for a few years. Now here's a little fun fact. You can actually see a few Sailor Moon character cameos in the Sailor V manga. Toei Animation saw the potential in Sailor Moon. They struck a deal to turn the manga into an anime and they put the focus on Sailor Moon and her girl squad instead of the lone teenager Sailor V. Eventually Minako, Sailor V, joins the team now known as Sailor V. Venus. Kodansha, who owns Nakiyoshi, and Toei requested that the story be continued from just one story arc into five, equaling 52 acts of the manga, which was printed into 18 volumes. Toei, now that they entered into the picture to release an anime version, premiered the Sailor Moon anime on March 7, 1992 in Japan on Japanese television. The first season of Sailor Moon includes 46 episodes, which aired in Japan until February 27, 1993. Now this is called the Dark Kingdom arc from the manga and it includes Luna the Cat discovering Usagi is actually Sailor Moon, Usagi's first transformation into Sailor Moon, and the team of five inner guardians being discovered and joining forces. It included the discovery of Sailor Moon actually being Princess Serenity, her history of growing up in the Moon Kingdom on the moon a millennia ago, and being in love with this dude from Earth named Prince Endymion. Now there's this huge battle battle between the two forces, Serenity and Endymion die back that millennia ago. They get reincarnated on Earth in today's time as Usagi and Mamoru, who are actually Sailor Moon and this guy 
named Tuxedo Mask. Then we have baddies under the control of this malignant being called Queen Mataria, which is an incarnation of an entity who's existed since the universe was born, which is called Chaos. And an incredibly epic battle scene between Sailor Moon and Queen Beryl, who is Mataria's brainwashed human witch who did her bidding. And there's terrifying and sad deaths of the inner guardians. Those last couple of episodes are absolutely insane. We also find out that the same malignant being who started a war between Earth and the Moon back when the Moon Kingdom was a thing, Mataria, brainwashed Earth people into attacking the Moon. Now the English version was released by Deke in North America and it was heavily edited for a Western audience. This aired in North America from September 11th through November 3rd of 1995. Then enter Sailor Moon R, the second season, which aired 43 episodes from March 6, 1993 to March 12, 1994 on TV Asahi in Japan. This season included 13 episodes of the Maikai Tree arc and the Black Moon Clan arc, which consisted of 29 episodes. The Maikai Tree arc was unique because it's completely original to the anime and it was not in the manga arc at all. Now, while many people hated it and just consider it to be filler, I enjoyed its ridiculousness and I love that the main baddies, the Makaiju aliens, Ale and An, they have striking similarities to the main antagonist in the Sailor Moon R movie. This 13 episode episode filler arc was created in order to give Naoko Takeuchi time to draw the manga arcs to continue the Sailor Moon story. She was actually creating it at the same time the anime was being produced. Now the second part of this arc features the introduction of Chibiusa and Sailor Pluto. Now Sailor Pluto is the guardian of time. She protects the space-time door, and it's quite mysterious and quite lonely. Chibiusa is the daughter of Sailor Moon. What? and her dude tuxedo mask, and she's from the future. She steals a space-time key to travel way back to the past to find Sailor Moon to hopefully save her future, which has been attacked by this group called the Black Moon Clan, which is a group controlled by wise men who, no surprise, is another incarnation of chaos. Chibiusa's parents are known as Neo Queen Serenity and King Endymion in the future, and their kingdom is called Crystal Tokyo. Now, the air dates in the US are confusing for the second season. I wasn't tracking specific air dates as a kid, and depending on what site you reference, these dates do vary, so I will give you a general overview. In the US, we got somewhat of an out of order experience thanks to these like weird ass syndications and licensing issues. There were changes in networks, cancellations, but eventually we got all but one of this season's episodes, thanks in part to an online petition, which yours truly did indeed sign when I was like 10 years old. I'm pretty sure we weren't supposed to be signing petitions when we were 10 year old children, but it was Sailor Moon, so it was worth it. So in English, we have the Doom Tree arc, which is episodes 41 through 53, which aired in November of 1995. The Black Moon Clan arc, dubbed Mega Moon, which is an arc that has episodes 54 through 65. This also aired in November of 1995. Some reports state that these two arcs were aired backwards, but I have no memory of this. I have the memory of a goldfish, and as such, I cannot speak to those specifics. The show was eventually canceled in North America after English episodes 65, but then it came back, so we were finally able to see those last episodes of Sailor Moon R. We got episodes 66 through 82 three freaking years later from November 30th, 1998 to December 22nd, 1998. Now these episodes were called the lost episodes here in America. I remember seeing the Toonami advertisements and being so excited to hear that there were more episodes to watch because as a kid, I did not even know there were any episodes that I hadn't already seen at this point. I didn't have any friends that were into Sailor Moon like I was at this point in time. So honestly, as a kid in 1995, who would just randomly catch this incredible new show about strong young women who fight evil by moonlight, having female superheroes that were also teenagers and easy to identify with, I can't tell you how annoying it was trying to chase down episodes as these networks and time slots shifted over the years. I mean, no wonder the show didn't do good in America. These big companies done screwed it up. Now this season features one of my favorite episodes of Sailor Moon, which is Protect Chibi Yusa, Clash of the Ten Warriors, Japanese episode 68, and English episode 61. It's pretty epic. There's this big fight scene, and the dub had this incredible music. 
Oh my gosh, it was so good. Like it brings back so many memories whenever I think about watching that episode, whenever I do watch that episode, because it's still, it's still amazing. So up next is the Infinity Arc, including episodes 90 through 127 called Sailor Moon S. This was next airing in Japan from March 19, 1994, and it ended on February 25th, 1995. In the US, a new company called Cloverway licensed the show for North America in 2000. So it hit Toonami from June 12, 2000 to August of 2000. At this point, Cloverway changed the episode numbers to match the actual numbers for the Japanese release, even though several episodes were never dubbed for American television. So the Infinity Arc also started with episode 90 on US TV, which would be episode 83 if you subtract the cut episodes. Now this is my favorite season. I love the atmosphere in this season. It is spookier, it's darker, and it's a little bit more serious and mature than the previous seasons of Sailor Moon. The Infinity Arc introduced Sailor Uranus, Neptune, and Saturn, and we also get to see Sailor Pluto again. The villains in this season are called the Death Busters from a different star system entirely, and their leader is a possessed human named Professor Tomoe who oversees the health of his daughter Hotaru. His intention is to revive their leader, Mistress Nine, who possesses the body of Hotaru after she faced a horrible accident as a child that left her nearly dead. Tomoe not only promised the body of Hotaru to Mistress Nine as a host to keep her alive, but he also kept her alive by turning her into a cyborg of sorts in the manga. Mistress Nine's role is to guide her evil partner, Pharaoh 90, who also happens to be an incarnation of chaos, to Earth in order to take it over as their new world. Sailor Pluto, Uranus, and Neptune hold these keys to defeating the Death Busters. These are called the Talismans, which create the Holy Grail, which is an upgrade that allows Sailor Moon to transform into Super Sailor Moon. Hotaro eventually is discovered to not only be possessed by the Messiah of Silence, who is Mistress Nine, but also be the soldier of silence, ruin, and birth, Sailor Saturn. Sailor Saturn reveals in this season that she'd originally brought destruction to the Moon Kingdom during the long ago Silver Millennium after the war between Earth and the Moon. Her destruction allowed for the rebirth of a new era on Earth. The Outers were afraid of Saturn, thinking that if she awakened, she would destroy Earth because that must be the only reason that she exists for destruction. But when Saturn finally awakens, she ends up killing Pharaoh 90, not Earth, and she sacrifices herself in the process. Sailor Moon is able to resurrect Hotaru as an infant, and she is raised then by her father in the original anime as he survives, and later joins the Outer Guardians once Saturn awakens again. Now, S is a crazy, and it's a very deep story with a lot of interesting plot lines. I think that its depth and darkness is the reason that I I love it so much. Immediately after Sailor Moon S is Supers, or which I called it as a child, Super S, aka the Dream Arc, which aired in Japan from March 4th, 1995 to March 2nd, 1996. This season aired in America on Toonami from September 26, 2000 to November 16, 2000. Now this season includes episode 128 through 166. This season heavily focuses on Chibiusa and her friendship with a week winged horse named Pegasus, who she sees in her dreams. The dream arc introduces Queen Nehelenia, who was around at the same time as the Silver Millennium on the moon. Now she ruled her own kingdom in the anime, but she went mad when she learns that she will eventually lose her beauty and grow old. So she was sealed away into a mirror by Princess Serenity's mom, Queen Serenity, and she was assumed to be sealed away for eternity. But Nehelenia got her revenge by setting a curse on the moon kingdom saying that it would fall and the princess would never inherit her throne. And what happened? Well, you had Batty Mataria brainwashing Earth people into killing the moon people and everybody died, including the princess. So I guess in a way, Nehalania did get her way. Eventually that mirror seal did break and she formed a group called the Dead Moon Circus, whose goal is to find Pegasus, who is hiding in human dreams in order to obtain this golden crystal that Pegasus has hidden. Now Pegasus was actually a priest, his name is Helios, of the Earth Kingdom called Elysian, and he was a protector of 
of Prince Endymion. Nehalenia is eventually sealed back into her mirror prison, but her story does not end there. Next came Sailor Stars, the last arc of the series comprising of 34 episodes, equaling a total of 200 episodes total for the entire show. This originally aired in Japan from March 9th, 1996, and it ended on February 8th, 1997. Now, unfortunately for us here in America, Supers was the last season that we saw in the US via legal release until Viz Media bought the rights to the entire series back in 2014, and they started creating brand new dubbed versions that included all of the previously cut episodes, and it saw a much better adaptation that did not remove anything that earlier distributors deemed controversial, like Uranus and Neptune's relationship. That means for the folks that never found fan subs or dubs online, this would be the first legal release of Sailor Stars that you would ever see. So we first saw Sailor Stars here in the US in the 2010s when it was released via streaming platforms like Hulu. Eventually, Viz Media released DVD and Blu-rays of all of the seasons, including the dubs and the subs of Stars, with Stars coming out in 2019. That means we had to wait nearly 20 years since its release to see a legal distribution of a dub of Sailor Stars. That's insane to me. So Sailor Stars ended the series. The first part of this arc, the entire arc is called the Stars Arc, features Nehalania, and we learn that she's an incarnation of chaos. Nehalania is freed from her prison by this chick named Sailor Galaxia, and she's told to seek her revenge on the Sailor Guardians. Nehalania eventually redeems herself, and she is freed from chaos's grasp. Sailor Galaxia in the anime is the strongest guardian in the Milky Way, and it is revealed that she has been around for many millennia as well. She stopped a long ago war called the Sailor Wars by sealing away chaos inside her own body. And to keep chaos from corrupting her own soul, she expelled her starseed across the galaxy. Her starseed ended up on Earth in the form of a cute little kid named Chibi Chibi. Now Chibi Chibi protects and runs around with this little incense burner, which is revealed to be where a princess from a planet that Galaxia destroyed is hiding. This princess is named Princess Kekyu, and she came to Earth to hide from Galaxia while she healed from her previous battle with Galaxia. Her protectors, called the Sailor Starlights, went to Earth to search for her, and they do find their princess eventually. They also all eventually help Sailor Moon fight Galaxia. Sailor Galaxia, possessed by chaos, leads a group of villains called her Sailor Anima Mates in the series on the hunt for star seeds and Sailor Crystals, which she intends to use to rule the entire galaxy. At the very end of this season, she is totally enveloped by chaos. She turns into this demon-like figure with these giant bat-like wings. She looks awesome, and she's hell-bent on destroying Sailor Moon, and she's already killed off like everybody else in this season. Chibi Chibi, Galaxia's star seed, also called the Light of Hope, turns into a sword called the Sword of Sealing, which Galaxia destroys, thereby killing Chibi Chibi as well. But eventually Sailor Moon saves the day and gives Galaxia redemption and all of the Guardians are revived. That was a long story. There is a lot more to the premise and to the plot of Sailor Moon, so if you want to see a huge deep dive breakdown, let me know. Apart from the anime, there are also three movies. There's Sailor Moon R, the movie Movie, which was released in 1993, Sailor Moon S the movie, which was released in 1994, and Sailor Moon Supers the movie released in 95 in Japan. All three movies were released in the US on VHS in 1999. I remember buying those VHS from my local game store. I was very, very excited. Then Viz Media redubbed all of the movies as well. They did this limited theatrical release in North America theaters from 2017 to 2018. There were also many episodes that were released alongside these movies as well, and those are super adorable. I definitely and highly encourage you to check out the Blu-rays and DVDs so that you can see those additional episodes. They're really cute. Whew, I feel like I've just been talking for an hour. This encompasses the entirety of the Sailor Moon anime from the 1990s. Now you are probably wondering, where does Sailor Moon Crystal come into play? Crystal came out in 2014 in Japan, and it's a more 
faithful adaptation from the manga, so far with three seasons and two movies. This is basically a reboot of the anime and it has less episodes, a fast pace, and for context, it basically takes each chapter or act from the manga and it turns it into an episode with a few small edits for timing and animation. Season one of Crystal is the Dark Kingdom arc, season two is the Black Moon arc, and season three is the Infinity arc. Now season two does not have that Makaiju storyline because that story was not original to the manga, it was just original to the 1990s anime. Then we have the two movies which came out last year here. So good. Sailor Moon Eternal Part 1 and 2, which depict the dream arc. So far, we haven't seen the final stars arc of the manga depicted in this new crystal format, but we'll hopefully see its release within the next couple of years. I'm just like, I'm staying optimistic. I hope it happens. And dear God, please, Toei, if you do it, Please give Sailor Cosmos some airtime. She wasn't in the original anime, she's in the manga. We need to see Sailor Cosmos. We have been dreaming of this moment since like we first discovered that Sailor Cosmos was a thing from the manga. So make it make it happen. We want to see animated Sailor Cosmos. Just given this backstory, you can see and you can tell that Sailor Moon has been this phenomenon for three decades for a really big reason. Not only is the anime story epic, but it depicts something that we had never seen as young girls. These young girls who had superpowers, but they were fairly normalized teenagers. They weren't too grown up for us. They were not perfect. So we look up to them as girls that we would want to be friends with. We look up to them as girls that we could relate with. And Sailor Moon continues to amass an army of fans worldwide and for very, very good reason. So happy birthday to Sailor Moon anime. Happy 30th birthday. And if you enjoyed this historical video essay about the anime, subscribe comment on what kind of deep dives you would like to see. And if you're into tech, my full-time job is working on my main channel, which is called Morse Code. Reference links are down below. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Sailor Snubs, and I'll see you next time. Jenny.